Around ten and a half thousand years ago, this emerald isle was a perfect habitat for browsing by Irish elk or giant deer, plus some close relatives of the red deer we know today, and a healthy population of reindeer grazing on the mosses and shrubs. These have sadly now all gone. The current red deer inhabitants, once thought to have been descendants from the native stock, are now believed to have been brought over from Britain by a Neolithic people around 3300 BC. They almost became extinct in the 20th century when only around 60 were left, but they've now made a comeback to approximately a thousand. Following in the footsteps of these ancient beasts, a more modern beast, Paul Childerley, has come to this wonderful landscape, invited by Jason Doyle to help thin out another import. Seeker deer were introduced in Powers Court Park, County Wicklow, in 1860. They escaped and now number about 20,000. Even though prolific, against these hills and mountains, they're hard to find and even harder to stalk. Luckily for us, we have John Fenton of OB hunting along with us for his guidance and skills stalking in these mountains. I see John said, these are the ones that come up earlier. Keep going in front of us on this ridge line. Apparently there's a big plane up on the top. Oh, sorry, plane on the inside. So we're going to carry up through this, this gorge and then hopefully it might bump something in one of these little gullies. Some of this terrain is heavy going, but after several miles and a few thousand feet of climbing, we come across our first opportunity. Maybe it was the heavy breathing, but this one makes us and heads for the never-ending hills. Yeah, a little bit too personal. Yeah, basically, good stalk though, good stalk right in. And uh, used every type of bit of uh, ground we could find, couldn't we, get right in. Obviously they literally, what were they? 25, 30 metres away? Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, just want to make sure. Took the time. Their um, vision's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. They're on it, straight they're, they're away. On it and they, they, they're really on it and they, really, and they see yeah. something, they really know what they're seeing. Yeah. I imagine through the season they get more pressure, they, they get sharper and sharper. Yeah, and there's times you're 600 yards, 700 yards, yeah. and you make a mistake, and oh, away. The, the pin is yeah. straight away. Yeah. And after that, then the light you put on them is set in the air. And it's, yeah, it's, it's and they tell everybody else in the area. And, yeah, they're yeah, done. Yeah. everywhere. Yeah. White tails are up, yeah. and you're left feeling frustrated. Yeah, for another long walk. Again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And another long walk it is, as we push on over the next brow. I'm even starting to sound Irish. Where we come across a hind and her calf tucked away from the rest of the crowd. The wind is blowing hard up here. If we get it right, that's good for covering the smells and sounds of us approaching. As far as they are, even with the Sacco 85 carbon light in 270 with 156 grain game head ammunition, Paul knows that sometimes a little patience and time can lead to better opportunities. After sitting it out for a good 20 minutes, the wind is not giving up, so Paul tries to gain a little more ground. After another wait, he decides that there is no shot this time. The morning pushes on and so do our team, between hills and trees, deeper into the landscape. So the game has just changed quite significantly as we've come in into the forest. And that's what I love about this. We spent like two, three hours out in the howling gale on the mountain and all your senses sort of shut down. And then you come into the forest and it just goes quiet again. And the dog started to indicate deer. And you can hear stuff, you can see stuff, your eyes stop watering and it just kind of awakens all the hunting instincts again, doesn't it? We're seeing fresh sign, looking into little gaps and it just, ah, like it was a difficult day on the mountain, you're kind of plunging around in the wind, struggling to catch your breath and even, even walk a lot of the time, but just coming in here now, it just really feels like the, the hunt has started and hopefully we'll be able to 
pick our way down here and, and get it under our steering wheel off from the top. It's good fun. Yeah, yeah, amazing. High on a ridge, we glass the distinctive white tails of a hind and a yearling. Making sure this time, Paul gets as close as he can and settles unseen, ready to take the shot. Ah, man. Thank you, thank you. Don't ah, just like that, eh? Oh. Oh. What a, what a walk. For the red card, 147 metres. Was it? Yeah, I just put it smack on him. Yes, you boys made me work for it, I must admit. Great, isn't it? Fat. Unbelievable grain. Beautiful place. Yeah. Beautiful place. You must be seriously fit. Well, I would like to think I'm fit. Well, you are. There's no need to think. I've been following you all morning. You I'm... used to be fit. I don't know. If you're doing that and carrying him off the hill, he carried everything off of here. Yeah. yeah. Everything. Yeah. The only problem now is you've shot two. Oh, uh, yeah. And you've two hands. One for each hand. <laughs> I'll, I'll manage to carry them <laughs> Yeah, I can manage that. I'll give it a go anyway. That was great. Putting in the work really pays off, from the people that build the equipment, those that make the clothing, to those that learn the craft and spend the time studying and practicing their skills. The work doesn't stop here. To make good use of this harvested meat, there's still a long, long job to do. If you'd like to know more about Sacco, then go to sacco.fi. <laughs>